fishbowl. It's um, a concept of this one. This is a classic collage piece of mine, and I guess it's done in, it's done in watercolor pencil. And so all the work of a colored pencil piece, but then you go back over it, and you just you're you're, you're painting with, uh, water on a brush and you have to base the colored pencil into into basically watercolor paint and. It's actually uh, somewhat of a mess up on this one, where if you look at the sun, you can actually s see that this is almost an uncharacteristic style line up here, where um, I layered the colored pencil on uh, in a way that is, is just really, um, really thick, heavy pressure, even the slightest amount of water instantly activates all of it, it just turns black, and you, in some ways, lose some of the control um, most watercolor artists will actually argue that point, like, well, if you know how to do watercolor, you can do that. You should have amazing control. And, uh, but anyway, it, in the use of the watercolor pencil technique, I lose control when uh, I'm using the, it's that transition of the, the heavy layering of colored pencil use, and you're actually, in many ways, you're actually transitioning the use to, uh, a totally another type, and the, the, I found out the hard way there, uh, it doesn't quite work in my style as well. Um, you can't mess that up. But anyway, the imagery on that was pretty cool. It's just the concept of, um, there's so many things that I think we're discovering about the universe all the time. I really am interested in, uh, I guess, uh, a lot of science and human anatomy, the, the, body, the human body, and just just all these things. Um, I watch Nova and the Discovery Channel and a lot of astronomy space and stuff. Anyway, concepts that we're constantly discovering new things in science, and yet a ton of these new things, like uh, in, in the bottom right hand corner, those are deep sea vents. To give an example, of what I'm talking about, I saw a documentary from um, the deep sea vents off the coast of Chile, they're in a zero light environment, and yet there's a thriving ecosystem that's like moving off the sulfur that's coming out of the vents at the bottom of the ocean. So, you know, science, before that, basically scientists have thought that life virtually couldn't exist. You needed, you know, liquid water and you needed light at a minimum to produce, you know, uh, some sort of algae or plant life, and yet we have an anomaly existing on Earth where you have a life and it's thriving in a zero light environment, arguably it should be just not there, and yet it is. That's a total eye opener for the scientific community. There's a ton of other things that kind of were my inspiration. The whole, uh, I took Leonardo's, uh, um, his study of Ham and just his sketches and tried to play off of that. Whereas, you know, that's the, the study of and still the, the, the mysteries of the human body is, you know, is it an emotion like love? Is it just a bio, well, you know, a biochemical electrical impulse that your body can you, you, you just marginalize this emo, this human emotion that is so powerful that influences, you know, billions of people's lives throughout the history of the world, and is it? Is it really just chemicals and electrical impulses, or is there something more? And that's kind of what I'm getting at, that open separation of the mind and the, the mysteries with you know, the, the mind and the body, and, and through the human, that the human, you know, uh, study of the man there, for kind of symbolizing that. I'm just fascinated, as we continue with our scientific discoveries, in many ways, we keep Kind of finding and opening more questions about our universe. And it's just like, I, I threw space in there because according to physics, it's like something like physicists are frustrated and baffled because it's like something like 90% of the mass of the universe is unaccounted for. And it should, everything should fall apart. It shouldn't keep operating in an orderly fashion like it is. And yet, it is. And we, we can't account for like 90% of the mass in the universe. I said, what's going on? So then they come up with a whole theory of you know, anti-matter, black, dark matter that hypothetically could exist, and yet it's still is functioning in, in, in an operating, orderly fashion. And that just made me 
his picture face off of that. Pretty interesting. Anyway, I guess moving on. Uh, this is technically this is uh, Dark Rose, my first piece of this master's program. I guess I haven't been saying that. Uh, the three big ones. I skipped the door one. Uh, that was just actually this was a pretty fun one. I still thought it all over it. If you can believe it, this uh, night the only the only uh, white of the paper left after I dumped the whole 20 ounce cup of coffee on it was the white that you see the, 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 the doorway coming down, uh, the light coming out of the doorway. And that one is just really simple, it's a colored pencil word. Um, it's meant it, there's a door opening into another dimension, kind of became some inspired, inspired piece. Yeah. Uh, this piece, Called the pencil work again, the rose. Uh, I bought my rose, I, I bought my wife a rose that was uh, a dark violet rose. I thought it was really cool. It was like almost black. Yeah, it was kind of an inspiration. And then uh, I just uh, put fire on it, I guess, making, making something just really random and creative. Students really like this one. Uh, I can make copies. So I'm going to give it away to students as gifts. Uh, they really enjoy it. And it's just a, it's kind of a, uh, just a fun, creative aspect. You can make stuff that doesn't make sense. You know, it's abstract and it's it, it, in, that, in that sense of like, you know, you never see a flower burning, you know, and yet it's, it, you can identify that it's fiber flower. So I like being able to see that. I guess maybe an inspiration on this one too, you could say it was maybe religious. In, in the back of my mind, I'm reminded of the famous uh, story of the Bible of Moses and the burning bush. And it's just it's such a, a cool, unique way that God revealed himself to Moses, to humanity. And it's like, well, I would God burn this bush, but not consume it. And he's talking to Moses the rest of his history, but it's like, I find that to be so interesting, and I guess that was maybe in the back of my mind too. When I made that this, I think, technically is my first piece of my master's program. I don't know if I have it available to you guys here. This one was actually really simple. It was just a still life done. It's almost my only still life. It's it's entirely watercolor. Um, even the really dark areas, you can't. If you look closely, you can see kind of some pencil sketches showing through the, the watercolor paint. But the, even the really dark areas are just just really opaque. Um, dark areas of watercolor is all all watercolor now. And that one's still I think it's just really simple, uh, nothing special, no groundbreaking, interesting concept. You guys, moving on. Um, one at the top, this is the colored pencil drawing again. I actually did another technique on this one, but this one, uh, it's Prismacolor uh, colored pencil, but then if you look closely, if you actually smell the paper, <laughs> there's, uh, I've used um, paint thinner turpentine to uh, with a paintbrush, and with Prismacolor, I don't know about other colors before you go doing this to your, <laughs> Prismacolor, their, their formula for their, their pencil um, kind of melts in a certain way uh, that you can kind of control it with uh, with a brush. The problem is, I think you're, you're basically thrashing the paper that you know, I think this will just destroy itself in the turpentine over time. But uh, it's actually a fun technique where you kind of turn a colored pencil picture into somewhat of a watercolor feel. Um, by, by using it. But anyway, the imagery on this one is uh, obscure verse, First Peter chapter 3, verse 18, section of scripture that's probably the most confusing to me in the Bible, and I don't like it almost the most out of a lot of sections of scripture. It talks about Jesus during the three days that he was dead preaching to the lost souls in prison from the days of Noah. And it's like, what? And this. It's like theologically baffling to like scholars and to myself and a ton of people debated for years and the Catholic Church has taken it, created the whole purgatory uh, theological doctrine out of it. And I don't necessarily, I guess, believe in purgatory, but 
it's just a way interesting piece of scripture to me.